this week in history, in 1965, Muhammad Ali threw the famous phantom punch that knocked out Sonny Liston. Did you see the punch? Did you see it? Ali held on to his heavyweight champion title, and his fame skyrocketed. Sonny Liston is probably still most well known for the alleged phantom punch, but there's much more to his story. And though it doesn't begin in St. Louis, much of Liston's life was spent here. But Sonny Liston had a really, one would think, troubled life growing up. Uh, he was one of uh, uh, 25 uh, kids, uh, and his father was a sharecropper. That's Reginald Williams Sr. He owns a boxing gym and is a coach for the Midwest Warriors Athletic Association. He was also a member of the 1980 Olympic boxing team. He says he grew up watching Liston fight. You know, I used to hear my dad and my uncles, uh, they was all big fight fans. And I used to hear them talk about Sonny Liston and this, that, and other. The bear, you know, uh, the bear with the big hands. Liston was born in eastern Arkansas. He was coming from a very abusive uh, home. Watched his mother and siblings get beat. He got beat. And basically just to work that field. Eventually, his mother left his father and came to St. Louis with a few of his siblings. Sonny came to St. Louis on his own around age 13 to join her. But his time in St. Louis wasn't easy either. Of course, Liston was growing up during segregation. And according to many accounts, he was still illiterate at age 13 on account of receiving no formal education in Arkansas. So school in St. Louis was difficult for him. Soon, Liston was getting into trouble with the law. He was getting in a lot of street you know, fights and, and, and uh, uh, basically strong arming, uh, you know, resorting to uh, robbing and, and strong arming, and they got him, to, got him into some trouble. And he ended up doing time at Missouri State Penitentiary. Boxing teams in prison were common at the time, so the penitentiary is actually where Liston learned to fight. After he served two years there, he returned to St. Louis and began to compete. If you would compare Sonny Liston to a modern day boxer, well, he came up the same way, George Foreman. Uh, those guys basically had no boxing skills whatsoever. They just hit you and knocked your brains out your head. Liston had a few things going for him when it came to boxing. He had a long reach, 84 inches to be exact, and the largest fist of any heavyweight champion ever. He had uh, hands three times the size of a normal man's hand. Uh, I was told they had to kind of custom make his glove to, to compete. He made his professional boxing debut in 1953, but as he continued to find success in boxing, Liston also continued getting into trouble. He was arrested at least seven times in St. Louis for various crimes, including assault, larceny, gambling, and even impersonating a police officer. With mounting legal troubles, Liston left St. Louis for Philadelphia in 1956. Liston was also associated with organized crime through his managers. All of this affected the public's perception of him. And to many, Liston was a villain. See how the crowd reacts to his name versus Floyd Patterson's. Sonny Liston! The world heavyweight boxing champion, Floyd Patterson! Floyd, if I recall correctly, was actually a uh, pick to win. Uh, but no, no one really, unless you actually got into, uh, into the ring uh, with Sonny Liston, uh, no one really knew how hard and how strong he was. In 1962, Floyd Patterson was the world heavyweight champion. And on September 25th of that year, Liston took his title. Who was the better boxer? Floyd Patterson, by far by none. But you just can't take that kind of punishment and villain or not, Liston was now the heavyweight champion. Two years later, Liston would face an up-and-coming Muhammad Ali, then known as Cassius Clay. 
Try to bring the guard down. The two fought on February 25, 1964, for the first time. Liston lost to Ali on a technical knockout, and Ali won the heavyweight champion title. But to officially settle the feud, the two faced off again on May 25, 1965. And you probably know what happens next. Liston was knocked out by the alleged phantom punch. The fight was over in less than two minutes. In a press conference after the fight, Liston defended the punch. Sonny, did the punch surprise you? Clay says, Clay says it was a new tactic, the counter right. It was a surprising punch. And Ali said he hit Liston hard. That's all. Goodbye, guys. Twist. And you can't see it, but if you were hit with it, all of you be out. But many thought the fight was fixed because of Liston's connections to organized crime. Reginald Williams Sr. doesn't buy it. The punch landed. It landed on a pressure point. And uh, for the ones that's not skilled in, in to knowing what you're looking for, uh, you would think that, that it was a phantom punch, that, that he took a dive. I, I, I slowly don't, I don't believe that. You know, I think the guy just got a bad rap. Williams says because of Liston's difficult and often controversial life, he isn't remembered as well or as fondly as someone like Muhammad Ali. There should be statues of him. Uh, probably one, I would say, now most people would disagree with me, probably, if not the best, in the top three best uh, boxers that ever came out of St. Louis. Because this is where he came out of. You know, this is, uh, you know, I know he was born in Arkansas, and, uh, but, but this, this is what I would like to call Sun Glister's home. Uh, but he never got his just due. Liston was knocked out by the Phantom Punch this week in history, 1965. For Living St. Louis, I'm Veronica Moheski.